Hey, what's going on everyone? In today's video, I'll be mathematically explaining why it'll be impossible for Terra Luna coin to reach $1 per coin unless we have an inflection point, which I'll be discussing in today's video. Because until we have an inflection point or until we have that change in Terra Luna, I don't think that right now is the best time to buy this coin in hopes that it will reach $1 per coin. Now, don't get me wrong. Terra Luna is an opportunity that I do want to get into. And I understand that many people want to start investing in this coin for the long term. Now, do I think that opportunity opportunity is right now necessarily no not an ideal opportunity just yet but again I definitely want to be one of those people that get into this coin for the long term because I think it has an immense opportunity. With that being said, though, the crypto market has already fallen down pretty drastically, as well as the equities market. The equities market has already fallen down 20%, which is why it is marked as the bear market territory. And so crypto, knowing that it has already fallen down drastically, right now is not the time to try to buy speculative plays in hopes that they will reach, for example, $1 for Terra Luna. Right now, we need to preserve capital. Capital preservation is going to be extremely important because when the time comes, when the market actually does bottom, we want to be able to deploy cash rather than just sitting there and not being able to actually buy the dip or invest in the coins or the stocks that we want to buy for the long term. Which again, I'm going to say one more time, Luna is one of the coins that I want because I believe it is going to be the coin that has consecutive 100% days, you know, just 100% up, 100% up, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, just continuing that trend of going higher and higher. But we need some sort of a change. Now, let's go ahead and just read this article because the introduction was a little long. So, the collapse of UST and Luna was devastating but there is still hope for crypto. This article does mention how many people did lose a lot on Luna. UST, a cryptocurrency that is supposed to stay at $1, aka a stable coin, is no longer $1. When something is supposed to be $1 and it's not, that's usually not good. What's more, the crypto token that backs UST, Luna, also lost virtually all of its value. Now, if we continue reading, this says there are things in crypto called stable coins. Now, stable coins are supposed to be $1. And if we go over here, it actually says that that's supposed to be $1, not 11 cents. The Luna chart somehow looks worse, which I believe, yeah, this is the Luna coin price. And it used to be trading at about $120 per coin, and now it is trading at, you know, a couple of cents. So naturally, you're thinking that the mechanism broke or something, but it didn't break. It worked as designed. And you can see that if you look at the amount of Luna that has been issued as a protocol, try to algorithmically bring UST back to $1 while Luna's price was also tanking. So over here, we can see the Luna outstanding supply going all the way from May 5th of 2022 to May 13th of 2022. And this is really the entirety of today's video, guys. How are people going to say that Luna can go to $1 per share? When you can see over here, the total supply of Luna went from about 725 million tokens on May 5th to about 7 trillion on May 13th. Meanwhile, Luna lost 99.9% .9 of its value. This is what hyperinflation looks like. So people are saying it's going to go to $1 immediately, not necessarily until we have demand on our side back again, because people want to see Luna go higher and higher because they know Luna has a chance of going 100% on day, 100% on another day, and consecutively going 100% on a day because the coin has already fallen so much. It doesn't mean that it needs to go back to $5 because again, look at how much supply there really is. It says 7 trillion, right from 725 to 7 trillion. That is a lot of liquidity right there. There won't be that change or that inflection point that we need until there is more demand. So as mentioned above, Terraform Labs, the company behind Terra, laid out a plan to buy $10 billion of Bitcoin and other crypto assets through the LFG in order to act as a backstop in case something like this happened. Because UST wasn't fully collateralized like other stable coins in the top five. Before the collapse, UST's market capitalization was 18 billion, way more than the nearly 4 billion the foundation had in reserve. Now take a listen to what Bloomberg's Matt Levine had to say about this whole cryptocurrency market. So he said that five years from now, if every cryptocurrency goes to zero, well, I don't know what the next five years will be like, but a plausible story as of last week anyway, is that there will be a continuing integration of crypto into the real economy. More crypto companies will be intertwined with other companies. Their stock will be in the indexes and they will borrow money from banks and use their own money to finance real businesses. Crypto platforms will be used for real economic activity and ordinary people will invest their savings into those platforms. And those investments will be used to finance real non-crypto business activity. So then the author of this article goes on to say, even if you're like me, a Bitcoin maximalist, praying for the day where we go back to just one cryptocurrency, you have to admit that we are going to see more crypto in more industries in the short to medium term. Now, what else did we learn for the UST crash? Well, on the bright side, somehow Bitcoin didn't completely collapse. Over 80,000 Bitcoin from that almost 4 billion treasury was potentially sold. However, we can't yet confirm if the Bitcoin was actually sold, but it was sent to exchanges during the mad dash to get UST back to $1. That caused a price reaction, sure, but then again, the broader crypto market sold off because bad things were happening to a big crypto project. Luna was once the 10th most valuable cryptocurrency. And on the 
this macroeconomic environment and general risk off sentiment in the market, it feels almost impossible that Bitcoin still boasts a market cap of over 500 billion. We have a lot of bearish sentiment in the markets, not only in the crypto market, but also the equities market. Remember, I said in the beginning of the video that the S&P 500 was officially marked as bear territory because it fell down 20%. 20% is not necessarily normal. And while bear markets are necessary for bull markets, they don't happen all the time. So what's happening right now, it is kind of a shock to a lot of people considering that a lot of people just started investing. And we can see the price of Bitcoin as of right now, it is around 30,000 in Ethereum, almost 2,000 XRP of around 40 cents. Solano, $50, which used to be at around, I believe, 175. But the good news is that they are up and I'm going to be explaining why they are up right now, but how they may continue to fall even later. Okay, everyone. So now we are on the charts and let's go ahead to the Luna coin price or the Luna coin chart, I should say. So crypto and then Luna USD. So, okay, we have Terra Luna right over here. So we see this drastic drop. I'm pretty sure this is not surprising to anyone because this has been ongoing for, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days now. And then we have had some price consolidation for around one, two, three, four, five, six, let's just say around 10 days, right? So what do we do from here? And when can we start to see Terra Luna, you know, have a reverse or that inflection point that I mentioned in the beginning of the video? Well, in my opinion, Again, to time the bottom and to try to get this opportunity to buy this coin for the long term, I think we're going to need to see, of course, Bitcoin bottom out first and then Ethereum, et cetera, et cetera. And if we want to know when Bitcoin can bottom, because it is extremely volatile, I'm actually not going to be looking at Bitcoin to try to find when is the bottom going to be. I'm going to instead go to the equities market. So I'm going to go to the S&P 500. So I'm going to go to SPY and let's go to all stocks and then S&P 500 right over here. So whatever you consider a crypto bear market, I don't have the exact percentage just because again, crypto is extremely volatile, but I know that for the S&P 500 and for the equities market, a bear market is considered a 20% drawdown, which we used to be at around $480 per share on the S&P 500. Now we're at around 380 or we were at 380. Now we're at 389, almost 390. And this happens with bear markets, right? So we have one bear market rally right over here. Many people thought that this was going to be the bottom and then we started to go up. And you guys can actually see the price of Bitcoin starting to go up as well, and Terra Luna as well. However, you have a more vicious drawdown to the downside, obviously. And what I think is going to happen within the next few days is that the S&P 500 and also cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Luna Coin, because they're all in the same market, the crypto market, I think that they will have the opportunity to go and actually reverse again, temporarily to the upside. Now, where do I think these levels are going to be? For a swing trade, possibly if you guys were wondering what the price could be for the upside target, that number could be around $418. I'm going to say $418 for right now. And again, that is because look at these bear market rallies. So, and because we are currently in a bear market, you know, 20% drawdown, I think we will have one leg up and this will also follow in the crypto market. So if I go back to Bitcoin, let's go to crypto. Bitcoin, I think that Bitcoin will also see upside. And if crypto like Bitcoin sees upside, then what is Luna going to do? Luna, I think will also follow with that upside. So if I go to Luna USD, now how much upside will that really be? I have to go to the one minute chart, not the one day. The trend for Luna should be up within these next few days and also possibly next one or two weeks. However, then we might see even more drawdown. And this is because if we go back to SPY, which is why it's good not to just look at one coin, but rather look more eclectic and broader into the markets like the S&P 500 and also cryptocurrency markets like Bitcoin to see what you know the larger market cap stocks and indexes are doing in cryptocurrencies. Well, then here you go. So if I go back to the one day chart, not the one minute, we can see that if we do go back to S&P 500 at around $418 per share, that would give the opportunity for more short sellers, which they profit when the market goes down. That would give them an opportunity to enter their shorts at around this level right over here. And then what do you know is going to happen? Possibly the market could continue to decline even further just because, well, that would give them, the shorts, a great opportunity to start selling the market. And when you have a lot of liquidity like that, what is going to happen? It's going to cause much more drawdown. There are some amazing opportunities right now, and my channel's purpose over the next few days and weeks will be to try to find in that market and cryptocurrency bottom. So again, thanks again for watching, everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next video.